Hello dear students and welcome back to tutorial 3. This time we're going to measure the density. Um, measurements of density are important for, uh, for mapping because especially in um, uh, disaster risk reduction we need to know where people live and many times we don't have uh, exact numbers but we need density numbers. Also for policy for urban planning we need to know density. Uh, so, and we're going to look at that, how to achieve that with using geographical information systems. When you open the file I sent you, the zip file, you have to unzip it first, and then you'll have the project file. And when you open the project file, you should see something like this. Uh, we can see here, here there's uh, three layers. Uh, this one, this one, and this one. Uh, and especially is Objects Amsterdam. This is a data set coming from all point, uh, point data from all the buildings in Amsterdam. And when you uh, right click, uh, show uh, attribute uh, table, you can see how, how, how rich this uh, data set is. Here it is, the attribute table. So you have for each building, we have, uh, is it a resident, a function? the size in the square meters, and uh, how many addresses, so one address. Okay, let's go back to our, um, our map. Um, so now the first step is, okay, so density is the number of objects per a unit of area. So let's do that first. So we're gonna create the density of the objects per unit um, of area and we're going to choose hectare and the easiest way to achieve that is to convert all the points to a raster of 100 meters by 100 meters grid so we can just go to the tools um, conversion rasterize so um, vector to raster okay so here we have uh, objects we have, um, so what are we going to burn in? So we're not going to burn in nothing yet. Or oh, actually, yes, we are going to burn in the uh, number of addresses. How many points there are in um, a hectare? We'll come back to that in a second. Because now we have only once, if you remember, uh, addresses. One for each address. Um, so if you leave it like this, it burns only the value of one for each raster cell but we wanted to add up the addresses. We'll, we'll fix that in a second. Um, output raster size units is either pixels or georeference units. Georeference units is the uh, map units, so we want that. And because it's map units and we know it's uh, meters, uh, we say it's 100 by 100 meters. We know this because clicking here on the map, we we see that this is our uh, coordinate system, reference system and we know that uh, the Dutch reference system is in meters. So that's something you guys have learned in the first week. Um, output extent. So we're going to use this how big the raster will be. So we want it to be as big as the other layers. So I'm going to choose the neighborhood uh, layer. So I want to be as big as that. Okay. Create here the the extent and now down here additional command inline parameters so i had to i had to google this up so to find out how, to, how this was done and uh, with the raster tool you can tell it to add if you say to add it will add up the values of the um, the values of the addresses, the field to be burned in is addresses. And by using this expression here, add, it will save them and give it, put it in the right place. And we're going to call it, um, uh, make the new one for the video density um, Rust objects and run. Okay, here we go. We close it now. Um, and now we have our raster. 
as we can see in our table of contents, it ranges between 1 up to 464 uh, points. But you don't really nicely see it, because now gray, gray to black to white. So we can go to properties, right click properties, symbology, and we can choose a better symbolization. And I think here, uh, a pseudo color, so because it's single band, it goes, it's kind of a grays, usually it's represented with grays, black to white. Uh, pseudo color, we can choose a nice color. And uh, make this a bit smaller. And now here we go. Um, if we say apply, it already looks nicer. It's the same information. So one hectare with one object, all the way to one hectare with 464 objects. Um, still, it doesn't look super nice. So we see here higher concentra concentrations. Let's try something else now, which is um, instead of continuous, we're going to try equal intervals. So equal intervals means that the, the intervals are all the same, they're equal. So in the class breaks, so here to here and here to here are all the same. And or quantiles. Quantiles tries to put the same amount of data in each um, in each uh, bin in each uh, uh, class break. Yeah. So it doesn't look so good. We don't really see where the high density is. And I think I know why. Uh, to, when you look for this um, blue color. You don't see it very often in the in the map. Okay. There's one object here, very blue, and that object, if you can click on it, has 464 points, so the max. While all the other ones are much smaller, 129, 119. In order to cater for this, this one, we can uh, go to the properties and actually we could have also find out by going to the histogram and then uh, in the histogram we see a lot of objects with one and then up to a hundred and then this is actually, let's zoom in here, you see it's all, a lot of zero objects and only one object with 464. You can play a little bit with, um, with the histogram. You can um, uh, make this kind of zoom in on the histogram. And then right click for zooming out. So if the max is 464, no, only one value, maybe it will make sense to think, mm, maybe there's an outlier. And then um, we go to properties and then go back to symbology and say, well, my mean is now from one, one to 464, 64. But I can also go to the histogram and say, well, let's assume that all the way up here is an outlier and I'll choose my max as 300. Symbology and 300, apply, and um, make it equal intervals. Um, apply, yes. So I think this looks better now. Uh, let me try a different um, color combination. Right click here, okay, okay. just in the, in the reds. So light to dark, light. Yes, and I think this really shows much better the the um, density. So you see in areas with very high density, and a lot of areas with lower density. Okay, now we want really to classify. We, let, let's say that for the urban planning division, they really want to know okay, which areas are, are high density median density and low density. Now we have so many classes. Now the idea is that we go to properties and um, 
we instead of five classes we're gonna have three and we choose now the the values uh, let's see apply do you think this works well oh and i also said now it makes a continuous uh, linear interpolation between the values and i want it to be discrete apply yeah so the idea is that we will have um, high medium and low uh, densities uh, this already looks nice because I was already playing with the with this value here. Use 464, uh, apply. Uh, it becomes very big. So classify. Mm. I want it to be discrete, yes. And uh, quantiles. Uh, um, and I say apply. And now, now. This will be probably what you have from one to four, six, four. And the idea will be to create three classes that will look um, nice. Let's start with equal intervals, apply. So most of the data is on our lowest class. Then some of it is on our uh, middle class and very few points on our upper class. It's, there, it's not really what we wanted. So uh, I want you to consider other uh, intervals, make it look a bit uh, nicer. And it's a bit some trial and error here, but try to, to think um, what would be a nice distribution. And you can try to look at the histogram to see what do you think would be a lower density, a medium density, and then a high density. And I think 50 up to 150 maybe, and then the rest. Bulgy, yeah, fifty. Yes, I'm satisfied with this one. This is what the goal for this step. Okay, the next step is indeed to um, enhance this uh, this um, uh, density patterns because now we have nice density, but it's still a little bit um, scattered. You have uh, pockets of a very low density next to very high density. We don't want this. We just want one blob of high density, one blob of low density. So we don't so much care about uh, individual pixels, but we just want this kind of environments where there's high density. And definitely, this is one, and or environments with lower density. This is one. So how do we do that? We can create a filter where we filter out. We just keep on the main uh, values uh, by using either medium, for example. So we're going to have a filter to, to do this. Um, and filters are actually uh, implemented with, with the grass tools, grass, raster, and it's called neighbors. So we will look to have a look at what in the, in the um, assignment, there's a little movie explaining this really well. So we look at the neighbors on how to, which values to, to compute. Now we go here to neighbors, alphabetically ordered. Uh, here it is, neighbors. I tried to run it, but it says, oh, I can't find this algorithm. Remember from the previous assignment also, uh, grass, you have to run QGIS with grass. Let's do that now. So save your work, uh, close, and open it again using uh, QGIS with grass. QGIS with grass. Yeah. So we're back with the QJS with, with grass. Um, I'm gonna open the, the work that we were, the project we were working on. And uh, we can continue. So we search for neighbors for our filter operation. And here we go. So input raster layer, it's already there. Raster object, the only raster we have at the moment. Um, optional. So which operation do we want? So you can try different things here, and this is really important to think about it, what you're doing. So read, uh, watch the movie about these um, uh, focal operators or um, or neighbors or kernels. That's a, a link that is on the on the on the document. Um, I'm gonna try with the median and the neighborhood size. I'm even gonna say seven. So this means seven raster cells. So my neighborhood around me is seven raster cells. So I have myself and I have 
one, two, three. Um, and on the other side, one, two, three plus my cell is three plus three plus one, that's seven. So that's um, around 300 meters only uh, around me that I'm looking at. Um, usually gives best results if you have an uneven number here. Um, and uh, uh, okay, and we're going to use a circular neighborhood. And finally, we're going to save to a file. And that's it. It's the only thing we need to change. Um, and we're going to call it um, object filter for, I'm going to call it actually seven median. Save and run. Yeah, and this is more or less what we were looking for. I'm going to close it. So now I have um, a bigger neighborhood, of course. One, two, three. Um, and I created a kind of a median. So I can really see the region where there's low density and the region there's higher density. Let's um, change it again. So all the, so now the, the highest number is actually 208. It means that all these um, outliers are gone. Um, and let's go back to the symbology and um, single band shadow color and give it some sort of um, not continuous but um, equal intervals. Apply. Okay. Yes, this is exactly what we want. Very high density here with the Zaldas of objects, um, big density here. This is more or less instead of the big density there again. Okay, and the next step is then um, to create a heat map. And you've learned from heat maps before. Um, we're going to look for the heat map tool, heat map, also called kernel density estimation. And the heat map is applied directly on the point data. Let's get our points back. Um, so um, the tool is pre filled in, um, point layer is object. And the radius is um, how far we're going to search around each uh, new Russell cell for the um, points. So if we wanted to have something uh, a bit similar to what we did before, we remember we had a seven, seven Russell cell neighborhood. Well, this is just my example. Um, here we have to consider um, if it's a radius, then it will be 350 meters. But here I want you to really consider this carefully. But this really represents what you're trying to represent in your phenomena. If you're looking for neighborhoods with high density versus neighborhoods with low density, this size here should represent more or less the size of a neighborhood. If you're thinking of streets, high density streets versus low density streets, the size here should also represent the more or less a street size. This is this is what it represents. So how uh, geograph the geographical units that you're trying to, to represent. Um, then the pixel size, now it says zero, 0 0.1, well, it's much too small. We want it to be, to be similar to the other one, a hundred meters by a hundred meters. Um, mm -hmm. this we can all leave at default, save to objects, and we're going to call it the object heat map. Replace it. So ob object heat map. Um, and run. Done. Close. So it's not exactly the same. It's quite different. Um, let's have a look. But it's very similar also. So very big area here. Big area here, yeah. And they are different because the, the method uh, is different. One uses a weighted method to calculate the, the values. The other one uses yeah, it's just simply um, all values equally. So it doesn't matter if in the neighborhoods, if a point is very far away, it counts the same as it goes by, while in the density, it's not. It uses different um, levels and distances, distance weights.
Okay, let's give it a nice colors also to this one. Uh, double click. Um, pseudo color. And I'm going to make this one uh, the blues. Apply. Okay, now this should be very similar to each other. Yeah. Great. Um, let's move forward. And then um, next step will be let's compare this uh, object density to a different data set. Um, we have here, remove the objects, we have this neighborhood in Amsterdam. And if I go to uh, um, open attribute table, and there's a lot of information for each neighborhood of Amsterdam a code, the name of the neighborhood, um, the name of the municipality, but also how many people live in here, how many people are actually men, uh, women, and it continues, how many people live with, from 0 to 14 years old, 15 to 24 years old, it's actually percentages, uh, and it goes, uh, the origin of the people, uh, West people, Eastern people, and it goes up until a very interesting one for us, which is... Uh, uh, this which means uh, density, so it's, it, it already uh, calculates the amount, the density of each one of these neighborhoods it's been calculated for us. Uh, let's use this one to show it on a map. Uh, so we go here, we go to symbol, symbology, and we use in a graduated uh, symbols, we use the this we just saw dicht and we choose a nice color ramp and apply it it's already there for you so you can see it um, i already prepared these colors for you but if you don't have them or you lost it this is the way to get it uh, let's put this one on top let's close everything actually and put this one on top and now we open the um it map below it so we can see the differences and now we're gonna change the on the properties we can change the um, uh layer rendering opacity you see here and then let's move it to 75 apply even 70. okay and now we can uh, try to understand, um, well, actually, the, the, um, the assignment proposes look for areas where you think there is a poor match between what is the high density of the objects, here high density, high density, high density, and the high density of the um, uh, neighborhoods. And the question is, why do you think there is a poor match here? like here and uh, to explain it now the step seven it says okay let's let's say that we want to calculate our own density per uh, neighborhood and we're going to check uh, the neighborhoods and later the postal codes to see if we get uh, similar or different results um and so what we want to do is um for each one of these neighborhoods, we're going to calculate ourselves the density of the objects. Remember, because this density that we see now is density of people. On the neighborhood of Amsterdam, we want to calculate the density of objects that we don't have. So let's let's calculate it. Um, the, the way to do that is to, for each of these um, neighborhoods, to uh, sum up all the raster cells, the values of the raster cells inside. So in this one and in this one, you don't want to sum it up. And there, so it's like a, like a statistics of the raster cells for each one of these zones. And for that, we have a tool called zonal statistics. In zonal statistics, we tell them, okay, a raster layer actually is going to be the raster objects. So how many objects are there in each raster cell? Enter. And um, the vector containing the zones is then the neighborhoods Amsterdam. And what do we want to calculate? 
uh, count, it counts how many cells there are in each zone. Sum, it sums the cells, and the mean gives the average of the cells. We only care about the sum at the moment. Okay, and run. What it does, it creates a, um, additional columns on our neighborhoods Amsterdam. If you go to open attribute table, underscored columns. And if I move towards the end, here they are, an underscore sum. So it sums up all the values of its raster cell. So there is one neighborhood with zero, by the way. Oh, apparently it's an error with very small sizes. Um, and there is a neighborhood with 15,000 people. That's what it means. Let's have a look. Where is this? We selected it. There it is. This is the most populous uh, neighborhood. But of course, if it's a very big neighborhood, it might have a low density still. So the next step will be that we, um, we, we calculate the density of the, the neighborhood. And luckily for us, we actually have here, it says um, octot, so it means area total, area of land, and, um, and area of water. So we already have here a, a total area of, um, of each neighborhood. So we can use that to calculate our density per neighborhood. How do we do that? Let me unselect first. Uh, we go here to open field calculator. And it says, I'm going to create a new field called density, a whole number integers, yes. And I'm going to look for, I want to divide my total objects. Um, if I remember correctly, it was a field already. And it was the sum. And divided by my, my area. And the area is also a field and the total area. Imagine you say, okay, but actually it's unfair. I don't think we should divide it by the, the total area because the water, there's a lot of water in some of the neighborhoods. It shouldn't count. So we should count density in land. So then we will choose area of land. Um, but you can say, well, there's a lot of houseboats in Amsterdam. It should also count. So it really depends on the methodology needs to be clear, but it has to make it explicit. And now if you say OK, and there we go, you generate a new field here with these densities. And this means number of objects um, per hectare. Now, to do the same for the postal codes, let's close this one for now. It's very easy. If you have still if you still have it open, you have the raster objects, you have the vector containing zones, you can just change this to the postal codes and then same statistics and you can just uh, run it. Uh, close. And now when I have a look at the postal codes and if I right click and look at the attribute table, there we go. In the end, we do have um, a sum, uh, the sum of all the objects in each postal code. We do the same. Now we don't want the sum of the objects. We want the statistic. Um, we want the density. So we go to fields and the sum divided by the size. And luckily again, we still have um, an area in square meters. Oh, but this is square meters. And uh, so we have to convert the square meters to hectares because our previous one, we did it in hectares. So it is um, square meters. Uh, one hectare is 10,000 square meters. So we can just divide by one, two, three, 10,000. And that's it. And um, we create a new field and we call it density. Okay, here we go again. Look at the top layer. Where is it? Oh, interesting. It's a different location. Let's color this now base still on edit mode and stop the editing, save. Um, let's change the symbology of the puzzle code and the, and the other one. 
we go to graduated and the value we want is our density and we have a nice color ramp here and we say classify and we say apply and there we go and i think it will make sense to have here a kind of um, um equal interval So, and I'm gonna stop selecting everything because this yellow here is annoying. So you see the areas with very high density and areas with low density. And now we're gonna do the same thing for the neighborhoods. We're gonna make it, um, well, actually this one, the pencil, the postal code is confused because they're all red. The postal code, I'm gonna make it into a blue scale and the neighborhoods now. I'm gonna make it into, it's already a gray, gray scale. But I'm not gonna use this density of people. I'm gonna use what you just calculated, the density of objects. Apply, okay. We have to classify it again because it's other, other um, range figures, apply. I'm gonna change the, okay. So now here, if I turn on, so now you see very high density here, a little bit here. So it's slightly different from what we had before. Sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's not. And the question now is, can you also um, see the differences and create some kind of um, snippets of areas where it is particularly uh, big difference. So make some small snippets, so screenshots of the, of the map, or just draw on it, on word, of areas where it doesn't fit so well. And then the question is why? Okay, that was it. Uh, good luck, and I'll uh, look forward to see your assignments.